is um, the week of April 13th through April 17th. And we are going to embark on this very large Mexican mural that's right in front of us. So let me just get this to be a little bit larger for us to dissect and digest all together. Okay. All right. I really had to scrunch this picture down to fit on the screen. So the name of this is called Dream of a Sunday Afternoon in the Alamanda Park. This is by the artist. His name is Diego Rivera. Done in 1947 to 1948. This is Fresco. And he is known as a Mexican muralist. You could also classify him under surrealism. He's not sp specifically calling himself a surrealist painter, but he likes to take some of the elements of surrealist um, characteristics and apply it in his in his painting. So in this particular one, we definitely are going to see that. As you can see, there's a lot going on. We're not going to go over each individual person, but there are a few key people that we need to kind of just point out, go over, make you understand how this is set up so that you can you can understand it a little bit more. So real quick, um, basically, just the overview of this is trying to show 400 years of Mexican history in Mexico's biggest park. Okay, so that's where that Alamanda Park comes from. Um, this is um, the Mexican Revolution, just so you can write this down for context, happened in 1910 to 1920. And what we need to know just a little bit about this park um, is that it's in Mexico City, and once there was a monastery there, and then also there was, um, I guess, a, a center for cremation where the Inquisition victims were, were burned alive here. And later this became a public gathering place for concerts and political rallies and a military um, campground. So you can kind of understand a little bit about where um, the importance of this park is is why Rivera is depicting it. So again, like I said, Rivera never joins Surrealist, but he uses some of their elements. And just to know a little bit about him, lived in Europe in 1908 to 21. He painted in the Cubist and Impressionist styles. In 1911, he painted mostly fresco murals. And then in 1921, he returns to Mexico. He didn't really work for any museums or palaces. He really only wanted to work for the people. And the figures in the painting, uh, Rivera depicts famous historical figures and the controversy people of Mexico. And this includes everyone in Mexican history. He has a nostalgia for feeling, um, for uh, feeling, but sentimental because Rivera gives injustice um, its place in history. So again, this is supposed to be re um, alluding to dreams and surrealism. And basically that's focusing on the complex dream like um, many of the surrealists, which allows Rivera to uh, juxtapose unrelated subjects. So again, that focus on a complex dream. So again, mentioning a little bit, so we mentioned that this is um, Rivera's depicting a park, but where is this actual mural depicted? So that's where we just need to talk about for just a second, the location. So he was commissioned for the Hotel Del Prado, and this is also in Mexico City. It's for, it was known for its most luxurious hotel in Mexico in 1932. Uh, it was put in a restaurant, but moved to a lobby after a controversy caused Rivera to change the sign this man is holding. Um, so if you just want to, if you can, if you either want to just like put a circle, circle around this guy, it's actually this guy right down here, the one that's holding the smaller sign, you can maybe put him as number one if you want to. And what's important about him is it used to read that God didn't exist, but now it reads Conference in the Academy of Latran in 1836, which is an important allusion to the separation of the church and state. Um, after this, it was actually moved to the Regis Hotel after the 1985 earthquake destroyed the Hotel Del Prado. Okay, so basically what the only other thing I wanted to go over are a few of the main people that we just need to focus on. So this was one of them. So that number one, again, is this man that's holding that sign and that was, that was controversial. Um, and then um, go from there. Uh, let's see. 
if you notice right here, this this woman right here, she should look familiar to you. Can anybody guess? Well, if it hasn't come to you yet, this is supposed to be depicting Sor Juana uh, Ines de la Cruz, okay? And let's see. Just trying to see if I can point out some particular people that you need to know. Um, this guy, the one that's above the man that was holding this sign, if you want to put his name down, he is Benito Juarez, and he's the president. And let me go ahead. We have some indi um, indigenous. Um, so we have Hernan Cortez. He is number, let me just make sure if I get him right. Okay, we got Hernan Cortez. And we got one of this other man named Fray Juan. And Hernan Cortez, he conquered the indigenous people of Mexico and installed Fray Juan, the guy next to him, to the Catholic Church. Um, in the center, if you can kind of point him out, uh, where is he supposed to be? I am trying to find the dictator. Number seven. Okay, so he's supposed to be right below the hot air balloon. So I'm guessing he's like right here. This guy um, who's right below the hot air balloon. Um, that is an important person. You need to write his name down. Porfirio. P-O-R-F-I-R-I-O. Diaz. And he was the dictator for 30 years. And he brought some stability at the expense of indigenous and of the poor. Um, above that, let's talk about something uh, pleasant. This is a hot air balloon and that is supposed to be a symbol for hope for the Republic of Mexico. And let's see. Um, okay, I would say the only other uh, people we need to focus on is this little group right here. So this little group right here, they're the ones that we need to just talk about for just a minute and then, then we'll be done. This one, we're going to keep it short and sweet. Um, this is known as the Central Quartet, okay? So what's important here is you're going to recognize a couple people, you might recognize those two people and you might recognize what she's holding. So um, this is the Central Quartet. We need to talk about La Katrina. And that's this skeleton lady being depicted right here. She joins the hands of a young Rivera. Okay, this is our artist. And of this guy right here, his name is, uh, he's a famous printmaker. His name is Jose Posado, who created the famous skeleton print. So that's this right here. Um, La Katrina, she criticizes Mexican elite, so that's why she's um, kind of dressed in more of a fancy attire where she's got like a boa and that really fancy kind of a um, hat with those big feathers. Um, she represents the Aztec god goddess um, Coliquico. I don't know if you remember that story, um, and is the symbol for death, which is present in Mexican culture, um, more than in U.S. and Europe, because they see death as a friend, not a threat. So again, um, celebrating the life of someone when they pass away is viewed a little bit different than how it's viewed here in the States. If you notice off to the left, um, this person should look familiar to you. This is Frida Kahlo, and she's dressed excuse me, dressed in a traditional Indian dress, holding a yin and yang symbol, which represents Revere and Kahlo's relationship. So um, the last thing um, I would like for you to do, and this is going to wrap us up, is I need for you to do where you label the left, the center, and the right. And then we'll be done. Okay. So the left side, if you notice, uh, is going to be represented as the conquest colonization, the independence, the revolution. On the right side, we're going to see modern achievements and events going on. And then in the center, we're going to see a snapshot, a snapshot of the Burgoyne's life in 1895, 1895, which is refined people in their Sunday best under the eye of the poor Portofino Diaz, which is the dictator right here. Okay, and the size of this, I don't know if I had mentioned it earlier, it's 15 and a half by 49 feet. So this is extremely large.
And looking over my notes, I think that pretty much covers it, guys. There's, again, I know there's a lot of people involved. I wanted to just mention the ones that were really important to kind of um, just make you understand this a little bit more. Um, have you also understand like the sides, you got the left, the center, and the right. And of course, just go back to the con article because after you now have seen this video, you might be able to put, put more two and two together as far as understanding the bigger picture of this one. Okay. All right. This is Mrs. Howard signing out.